Now, you've auditioned uh, multiple times for RuPaul's Drag Race. I did, yes. Tell me about that. I know you wrote a piece for The Advocate talking about some of the problems we have there with the non-inclusivity of the casting. Yeah. Give me, give me a little rundown of that. I auditioned uh, for the race because I wanted the world to see that kings can take up the same space and can share the same stages. And um, my personal kind of mantra has been kings can reign just as spirits as queens. And I kept auditioning and I was, I thought I was putting out talented things, but I just kept telling myself that they didn't see me yet on the show. I wasn't ready for the show. Maybe they couldn't figure me out. So I just kept auditioning thinking I'm not ready. Because many queens, you hear stories all the time. They audition four or five times before they go on. Yeah. And so I just kept auditioning. And then um, Rue had that little interview where she spoke her mind about what she thought about Kings and that we don't mix and that we're not compatible, that we're like an IBM and a Mac, that we just don't, we're not compatible. Mm. And that really, really struck a nerve because I had been making a name for myself and already traveling and doing things, mixing from the beginning. And I knew that that, that was such a powerful statement, not because it's her opinion, because her opinion is her opinion and if she runs her show, how she runs her show. There's, I'm, no comment on what she decides to run her show. It was the fact that she went public and said this very divisive comment on how women in drag don't, we don't belong or we don't mix or we're not compatible. And that was a powerful statement that everyone took and took back to their local bars and divided the shows even more. Mm. And the audience members then still didn't know about Kings. And there's so many ways you can introduce a, a community and a small version of your community and a subculture within your community without having um, competitors of that community. There's so many ways that she could introduce kings and, and all these alternate forms, but she made a very powerful statement. So I wrote my advocate article, <laughs> as, you, as you mentioned, and um, I got a lot of hate for it, but again, you I- You did? You got a lot of hate for it? I did. I had a lot of praise and a lot of um, uh, AFABs, assigned female at birth people, and and transgendered men um, really applaud me for, for, for sticking my neck out like that because it, it was a, a very um, pointed article that I wrote. And of course it got edited by, by the advocate and things. So stuff got, got set out of it, but. All right, so, so some of the subtleties were gone well, and it was yeah, just headlines. I, most of it was giving um, Rue the, uh, the, what is it? Giving Rue the acknowledgement that she deserves. A lot of my, my statements were started with, look, I know she did this. She worked, she worked in a van, traveling around the world, holding uh, spotlights for local shows. She's trying to get on stages just to showcase herself. Like, she was been working very, very hard for her, to get where she is. So I was not taking any of that, what she's done for the, the platform, for the community. The, without Drew Paul's Drag Race, I wouldn't have been able to performing live for a living before I was on Dragula. I, I recognize that and I know the hard work that, that she did. So I was constant in my article, I was constantly giving like acknowledgement, but uh, all of the acknowledgement got taken out because it was fluff. Right. And so it just got to this pointed like, <laughs> I'm an angry lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. It happened. <laughs> but fuck, I'm an angry lesbian at the same right. time. Why so not? Embrace like, it. <laughs> um, yeah.